What's up, audio nerds? Welcome to the Audio Hotline, the channel where I review audio gear for beginners, professionals, and everyone in between. Today we have a budget microphone in the studio. It is known as the Fine Fine K8. Well, I just went through most of this review and forgot to press the record button on my Zoom H5. So, <laughs> it's just been an asshole of a day today. Just a giant, stinky asshole of a day. <laughs> you can purchase this microphone on Amazon for $27.99. When you do buy this microphone, you are going to get a 20-foot XLR to 1 fourth cable. You're going to get a windscreen, get a little carrying bag, which is always a nice addition. You'll get some documentation, and of course, you will get the microphone. One of the things that you will not get in the package is a mic clip. I know. I don't love it when microphones don't have a way to mount it onto a mic stand. It actually really bugs me. But they have them for dirt cheap on Amazon. The one I'm currently using is more of like a dynamic microphone shock mount. I think these are about $9 to $12 on Amazon, but you can definitely find some mic clips that are dirt cheap. So if you are going to buy this microphone and you intend on mounting it onto a mic stand, definitely put a mic clip in your cart. As far as the build quality of this microphone, I am actually insanely surprised by it. I think it feels really good. It's really sturdy and the grill feels great and it's just, it's fantastic. One thing I do love about the build of this is where the on-off switch is. I know this isn't going to seem like much at first, but hear me out. The on and off switch is actually at the very bottom of the microphone. Why more people don't do this, I will never understand. And here's why it's awesome. So if you plan on holding your microphone, you're usually gonna hold it right about here. A classic thing that always happens is accidentally hitting the on and off switch. You wanna know why? Because it's placed in the middle of the damn microphone, right there, where you grab it. On this one? under where my hand goes. So there's never going to be an instance where I accidentally turn this microphone off unless I'm grabbing it like a complete jackass. Anyone who holds the microphone like this is a singer who's a f***ing diva and a person that you need to steal that microphone from and slap them in the damn face with it. So I am super excited to test this out, but before we test it out, we got to get to the specs. There aren't many specs in this manual, but I'll just of course read the ones that are in there. The Fine Fine K8 is a unidirectional cardioid dynamic microphone. It has a standard response of 600 ohms. It has a sensitivity of negative 52 decibels plus 3 dB at 1 kilohertz. This microphone has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 14 kilohertz. Here is the frequency graph. As you can see, it has a slight roll off in the bass frequencies, followed by a boost from about 80 hertz to 120 hertz. The mids are somewhat leveled out. There is some slight dips there in the 1K area. Then the microphone begins to boost around 3K, and it does have a pretty intense boost up to about 15K. On the spec sheet, it does say it has a built-in acoustic pop filter to kind of help with some breath and wind noises. But as you can already see, I think it needs a little extra help. So I put the provided windscreen on. Now that we've talked about the specs, let's go ahead and test the Fine Fine K8 out. If you like watching horror movies while cuddling with your microphone, here's how it's gonna sound. And if you just can't quite get through a Friends episode without needing to cuddle something, here's how the microphone's gonna sound. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled penises. 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 When I just obnoxiously bang on a keyboard behind this microphone, here's how it sounds. That's a, that's a pro, for sure. Good things. Well, I just got a bloody nose, but I'm on a time crunch here. Let's keep going. When you talk into the microphone like this, it sounds like this. When you talk into the microphone like this, it sounds like this. And when you talk into the microphone like this, it sounds like this. Now we're just doing a little bit of a distance test. The microphone is about three feet away from me, and this is how it sounds with the gain bumped up from 50% on the H5 to 60%. I hope this bloody nose stops soon. Now 
I'm just doing a quick post-processing test. This is with the windscreen on. This is what you could potentially get this microphone to sound like if you were doing a podcast, some spoken word stuff, anything like that that you need to put some post-processing on. All right. Now that we've gone through the overview, the specs, the testing, let's go ahead and get to my review of the Fine Fine K8. Mm, that's good. It's mostly whipped cream. If you've never watched the audio hotline before, then you wouldn't know that I give letter grades to each piece of gear that I review. That letter grade is contingent on two things, the quality and the price. So if I give a microphone an A+, it means that the quality of that microphone is amazing for the price you paid. And if I give a microphone an F, it means don't waste your time with this microphone. Unless, of course, you like the microphone, you can have your own opinion. I think that's great. We all like different things. And before I get to my grade, I'm going to just run you through some pros and some cons. Let's start out negative. Let's go with some cons. On paper, the high end of this microphone seems like it'd be insane. But it's really not that bad. Like, yeah, is there some harshness in this microphone? A little bit. The only thing I will say about the high end is it does kind of have that whistle frequency in there. You can probably hear it in my voice a little bit. It is accented a little bit too much, and that's something I probably would bring down in post. But the plosives on this microphone can be pretty rough. With this windscreen on, I personally think it's night and day. I think that this thing saves this microphone. And obviously, they provided it for a reason. They obviously thought it could use it too. This microphone on the acoustic guitar, I wasn't in love with. I felt like it was just a little too much of everything. This next one is kind of interesting, and I'll kind of contradict myself in a second. But the proximity effect on this microphone is rough. This doesn't sound good. This doesn't sound good at all. But now let's move on to the pros section, and let me finish my sentence. <laughs> but the pro... With the windscreen on this microphone, the proximity effect doesn't sound bad at all. It's just literally that big of a difference makes this big of a difference. So, I mean, what was a con is kind of a pro because of an accessory they put in the package. And that's good on them, which means I can't complain about that too much. I think the background noise rejection on this microphone is outstanding. Like, right now, I just started typing on a keyboard, and I honestly think that this sounds pretty damn solid. And I'm actually hitting this keyboard pretty hard. I do think the accessories that come with this are nice. I do think the cable is pretty well built. I don't like the fact that it doesn't come with a mic clip. That is one thing I forgot to put in the cons. But for the $27.99 that you pay, you probably shouldn't expect a ton of accessories. But the ones that do come with it are useful and are nice. A big pro in my book is the build quality. Dynamic microphones like this that are often meant to be handheld should be built tough, like Ford. They should be built really well because someone's probably going to drop it. It's probably going to fall. It's probably, you know, it's it's going to get beat up a little bit. So I love the fact that this is built well. Also, I talked about this earlier in the review, but I absolutely love the fact that the on and off switch is at the bottom. I think it's awesome. Maybe there's something I'm missing with that, though. Maybe there is a negative to it being at the bottom. But from what I can see and what I've experienced in the past, I think it's a definite positive. One thing that is a big pro is the fact that it does sound good. I don't think that it sounds like shit. The noise floor is actually pretty decent for a dynamic microphone like this, especially for the price that it sits in. And overall, the sound is just like pretty pleasant. I don't think it's too harsh to listen to or anything like that. So after some serious thought, I decided that the letter grade that I give the Fine Fine K8 is a letter grade of an A minus. For $27, I think this is actually a really solid dynamic microphone. I think that it is definitely worth that price. And honestly, it's better than some dynamic microphones that I've tried out around the $50 to $70 price tag. I think that this does a good job, and I think that it would be a good microphone to have around to travel with if you do podcast and you want a microphone that you're not too worried about because you didn't spend a ton of money on, but you know it's going to sound good and it's going to be reliable. Thanks for watching this review of the Fine Fine K8. I hope that it helped you out and helped you decide whether you want this microphone or not. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews. There are a ton coming up, like just a lot, like a 
like a lot. Currently been in the middle of doing some giveaways. When I hit 500 subscribers, I'm going to be doing another giveaway. And then 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing another giveaway. So stay tuned for that. And if the opportunity comes up to enter the giveaway, do not miss out. Once again, thanks for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you later, nerds.